Welcome once again to the Auram podcast the, on this bright Saturday morning. I'm your host. My name is Anthony Kuria, and I'm so glad that you could join us in this show that discusses all things related to human capital. The Auram podcast is hosted by Auram Consultants, a human resource and risk advisory consultancy that helps business businesses build winning teams. Today, this Saturday, this cold Saturday, I'm sure all over Kenya it's pretty cold. We have a hot topic that we want to discuss about. We've been discussing the whole of this month, the topic of employee welfare. As you all know, if you whether you are a CEO or you are a security guard, you are an employee. And you are both, I mean, your the welfare of what the company that employs you to do is something that you've been discussing about. But at the same time, we do have people who are you know, managers, they are entrepreneurs, and they need to understand them and the employees what employee welfare is all about. Now, today we are discussing stress management. Uh, and uh, I ha we have a panel of individuals here whom we believe can enable us to deconstruct this issue in a very, you know, in a very illuminating way. First and foremost, I have my colleague, the managing director of Auram Consultants, Madam Zipora Kuria. Uh, Zipi Karibusana. Thank you, Anthony. Good morning, viewers. <clears throat> yes, and also with me, I'll invite my pastor, my special friend. His name is uh, Barnabas Achoki, a relationship coach. Pastor Choki Karibu Sana. Uh, thank you so much, Anthony. Always a pleasure to be with you people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Pastor Choki will tell us a bit more about what he does. Beyond being a pastor, okay. he has what he does, but we will talk about that very shortly. And then finally, we have uh, the, what I like saying, the consultant who helps consultants get their job straight. And everyone needs to be kuambua boss, apa una, fanya mambo hivi na vile. Her name is Madam Martha Tuku, the LVCT uh, Chief HR Manager. Martha, karibu sana. Thank you, Anthony, uh, for that introduction. Welcome, viewers. <clears throat> and maybe I can take just a few seconds and talk about mm -hmm. LVCT Health and what we do to improve people's lives. We do a lot. Uh, yeah. For this purpose, I'll just talk about... Um, the mental health program that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, as, we support employers who, who would want to, to assist their staff uh, on mental health issues, counseling and all. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are an employer and you would want assistance um, for, so that you can help your staff get along with life, please look for, for me through this Oram podcast, you'll be able to get me and I'll link you up to able people. Um, I also want to talk out to mostly NGOs. Uh, there's a new uh, rule from the donors regarding uh, something we are calling safeguarding and simply put is a policy they have brought on respect uh, at workplace. And it constitutes various issues, including discrimination, diversity, and harassment of any kind. Now, we are training people also on that. We are training organizations on that, uh, on that policy so that you are compliant with the donor rules and regulations that they are bringing up. Please reach out to me, and I'll be able to connect you to people who can support you on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Martha, for that. We, we appreciate. Uh, as I said today, we want to discuss issues regarding stress management, uh, you know, as it touches employee welfare. And as you all know, stress management is, an, is, is, a, stress management is a necessity for people in the workplace. With many factors that could lead to stress, it is important that employers recognize and handle them appropriately in order to boost employee productivity. As we all know, life is all about from, from even when our ancestors 
we used to uh, plan ahead and think, okay, we need to, if they were nomadic, we need to move to pastures anew here and there. If they were settled, they knew you had to time the rains very co or correctly. Otherwise, you'll be stressed and uh, you'll find yourself without food and losing members of your family. So now things are a bit more different. Our stress is not, uh, our stress is less to do with Tutopereka Malisho Wapi, especially in the modern work, <laughs> working in the Yama Tutalima Lini, although that is still there, but more in the office setting, in the corporate setting, in the formal employment setting, it is more in regards to we are working, we are, you know, the 21st century workplace is very fast paced. And if you, uh, if you if you delay a bit, if things are not working out, then you find yourself under a lot of stress. <clears throat> now, let me start with Madame Zippy to get us rolling. Uh, mm. There's something we call stress. I want us to discuss what are the stress triggers in the workplace. Probably, Zip, uh, Madame Zippy, you could give us a hint on the same. Thank you, thank you, Anthony. Again. Um... As we discuss this subject, I think it's a, it's a heavy subject uh, that we all need to just kind of get a bit of understanding about. And when we are talking about the triggers, we can't talk about the <coughs> triggers without understanding, you know, what uh, causes uh, stress. And I would probably say it's as a result of many factors, either physical, emotional, financial, and other factors like economic uh, factors that probably are not... Um, related to the workplace uh, necessarily. When we are looking at uh, the current economic um, times, the inflation rates, things going up every day, you know, food expenses becoming very expensive. These are possible um, triggers to uh, stress at the workplace because employees are concerned and their minds are not just focused at work, but they're also focused on other areas of their lives. So when we are starting to talk about the stress uh, triggers at the workplace, um, we can look at it in isolation per se, but we also have to look at other factors. And one of the things mm -hmm. I would say at the workplace would be lack of uh, support, and especially from management, is an area that uh, mm -hmm. can result into a lot of challenges for employees. Uh, when we engage an employee and give them an opportunity to work, it's important for us to know what support do they need and how can we give that support so that we don't become part of the problem. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times, and when I'm speaking, I always speak to employers, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's systematic challenges, um, mm. that, um, uh, institutional challenges that would cause a lot of pressure, a lot of stress to employees. Sometimes mm -hmm. we engage employees and we don't take them through proper training. We don't induct them well into the system. And what happens, uh, we have a lot of expectation, these performance expectations. And this employee doesn't settle well within the organization because mm. the, the induction process has not been done well. They've not been settled well. And yet there's a lot of expectation. And definitely this will start causing a lot of uh, pressure, which might result in stress if it's not uh, checked. Um, I've seen also situations where stress is caused by colleagues. Um, and when I talk about colleagues, I'm looking at the whole organization from peers to managers to even the management. We talk mm -hmm. about a work environment. Unfortunately, we are the same people who create that environment as peers, mm -hmm. as managers, as management. And we need to be aware of the things we are doing on a daily basis. Are they creating an environment that becomes uh, very stressful for the employee and the employee is not able to thrive, they're able, not able to manage? It reminds me of, um, you know, a poem um, I had yesterday from... Uh, kids who are presenting, you know, on their talents. And this kid was talking about, um, she, she was reciting a poem, actually. And she talked about older siblings and how older siblings, um, you know, sometimes tend to step on the younger ones, and especially when they make mistakes. And, you know, she was saying, older siblings, be nice to younger siblings. Support them, handhold them. Because you've been there, you have made so many mistakes. You're still making mistakes. And, you know, I mm -hmm. thought about that, uh, and in the workplace, it's the same thing. As an employer, as a manager, sometimes I look at my junior employee and I'm thinking, you're making too many mistakes. And instead of holding their hands and supporting them, you know, I'm putting too much pressure and not necessarily giving them the necessary support they need. And this causes stress. And not, your body naturally, the way we will react, and I'm sure um, 
our guest today will probably help us understand this, this would naturally cause a lot of stress to an employee. So I think there's a lot of triggers. Some of them we cause them <coughs> without knowing by our actions, by the way we talk to other people, by the way we create the environment we're working within. And the employees are worried about many things. They're worried about their families. They're worried about a sick parent. You know, they are worried about will I be able to afford uh, cooking oil, you know, that has, you know, more than tripled. So when we don't give them the support they need, then of course it ends up causing uh, stress. And, you know, when I was reading about uh, stress, I was very surprised. I don't know uh, in Kenya the statistics, but when you look at the Western Europe, there are a lot of people who are dying. <coughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. and it's very sad that you know mm -hmm. something like stress that you know can be managed can end up killing people so again mm -hmm. i think it's uh, an area that we need to look at with keenness okay wow those are you know really good points that zp you have set us rolling to understand the triggers that come into our place before i come to you martha let me go to uh barnabas achoki the relationship uh, coach uh, sir from mm -hmm. your perspective I'm sure when you yes. sit with people, professionals, you know, couples mm. and all that, what have you mm. distilled as the stress uh, triggers in the workplace that, you know, you're helping people to overcome? What's your take on this? Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, Zippy, that was a, that was a very good uh, intro uh, to what we're talking about. And you may, Zippy mentioned something about just our relationships at work, be it uh, with our peers, uh, our seniors, or even our juniors. You know the people that we relate with uh sometimes a lack of proper uh, relational skills competencies can cause us to be stressed uh, i think zippy talked about uh how stress comes from those kind of relationships uh, as a as a, a safe conversation uh, facilitator one of the things we've come to realize is that so often when we don't feel safe uh, with the others and especially uh, with if you're talking about a uh, employee empl i mean a uh, junior supervisor kind of relationship then mm -hmm. uh, uh, it causes us to be at the at a place of uh, either fight of or flight mode and that yeah. also increases the hormones in our bodies that causes stress uh, mm -hmm. and so uh, being able to relate well at the workplace uh, you see somebody said that people leave work not because uh, they didn't like the organization but most probably because of the people they are working with uh if you if you if you, if you don't if you're working with people you don't like and cannot connect well with that can really cause a lot of stress so being able to relate well at our workplaces is is very very key and so i normally many times i will find that uh, probably it's a, a work situation or uh, somebody is working under very difficult uh, uh, circumstances, not in terms of the environmental uh, 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 aspect of it per se, but just the people that they are working with, the 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 the, the, uh, the team that they are in, you know, not being understood, uh, not being accepted well within the within the within the team, uh, that can cause a lot of uh, stress. Uh, so when you are always uh, uh, going to work, then think about the people that you're going to meet and and by the way do you know that we spend most of our time with our colleagues than even with our, mm. our family members and so that then uh becomes kind of like a, another uh, home for is home away from home and so if yeah. if the relationships are not working well then that can cause uh, uh, our stress levels to go up just simply because of the fear the anxieties that we have that uh, uh, cause uh, the stress hormones the hormones that cause bring about stress in our bodies to be released and thus affect us in that sense. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Wara Choki. You have said it very well. Mm -hmm. You know, from a relationship coach's perspective, you have brought uh, what I would say uh, meat to the bones of what we were, what mm -hmm. Zippy brought about it. Because at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. I'm working in a place. Yeah. Uh, I have a boss or I have a junior. You know, sometimes uh, <laughs> stress can also be reversed. It's not the boss stress. Yes. The junior. It could also be the junior. Yes. Uh, when the boss comes to marketing, uh, you know, here we have talked about employ employment law. You know, these two uh, HR mm. uh, experts have told us about the employment law. You can't just suck somebody the way you suck your house guard. So you're in the process of living with this person. <laughs> they are giving you hell and you still have to work with them 
and they are giving you issues. Yes. But before I go deeper into how this works, let me hear from the HR expert, Madam Martha. You've heard what Ziti has said, you've heard what uh, Mr. Choki has said. What's your take? Do you have a different uh, perspective to stress triggers in the workplace, Madam Martha? Thanks, Tony. And those are great insights. I don't have something different. I think they have nailed it on the head. What I can add is, um, like, from my experience over the years, what brings stress to people? So for viewers, we need to, uh, to understand that stress is any, any, anything that triggers your mental well-being. Uh, negatively that's what you can describe stress and for me from from my experience most of the some of the triggers would be uh, and this is what I always say the organization culture mm. and if it's not a culture of embracing people you find oh you have thought you have gotten you can even have left a very good job and then you come to this organization that Really, the culture is um, what I'll call my dog or new. And <laughs> now you don't know what to do. <laughs> you don't know what to do and you have left your job. You know that now triggers your mental health, eh? mm. that you have mm. made a poor decision. Mm. Uh, the other thing I have seen that triggers mental health issues in organizations is when mm. there is change. Mm. Um, and, and the management mm. of that change is not done well. Mm -hmm. There are some organizations mm -hmm. that expect that the employees should just embrace the change that is happening. Mm -hmm. so they don't mm -hmm. do the communication and, mm -hmm. and they don't do the, you know, you need to have steps of mm -hmm. letting the staff digest what is happening, especially mm -hmm. if it's affecting them. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is job insecurity. When mm -hmm. someone feels their job in is, is insecure, we, <laughs> we have a what in my workplace we have this thing, um, this line that I got to learn that it sometimes happens that a manager tells another staff to takutana kwa appraisal. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you find that <laughs> they even when they are leaving home, they you know, they are already stressed, they are feeling mm. cold. Mm. And then when it's appraisal time, they are actually sick because they don't know how it will go. Just yes. because you have a manager who keeps threatening, making your like your job feel insecure mm. to the point where you will find in some organizations the staff have to pay the manager to, to keep their jobs, yeah. Wow. And, wow. and if the HR is not out telling people, your manager is not the one who has employed you. <laughs> mm. the organization. So you'll find people succumb to that. Eh? And mm. they are just living in fear. They are stressed. Every time they are just thinking of how they are losing their jobs. Yeah. Mm. Um, then there is this issue of discrimination. Mm. And, mm. and like that's why at times I like NGOs because then you find the people who are funding they they are mm. very they are very strict on the organizations that they are going to fund that mm. this is the way things should go because you find there's a lot of harassment um a lack of respect people someone is just talking to you anyhow it can be even a junior talking to you anyhow because they have a direct relationship with the management so there's nothing mm. you can do so as a manager, you don't even know what to do because this is someone you're supposed to be supervising, but they are talking to you as trash, disrespect. Um, mm. You're supposed to appraise them and you, you need to appraise them good because then she, she, he have a relationship with the executive. So mm. in, my, in my experiences, those are some of the things that, uh, that trigger stress. And something else is when you're bored with your job, <laughs> um, you'll find yeah. that you can, you can even work at a place and you find you have reached optimum mm. and, and you can't grow because there's no growth there yes. and you're mm. bored with your job and even when growth opportunities come it's not you who gets those opportunities mm -hmm. so you can imagine 
people get stressed with home, eh? like Zippy mm -hmm. has said, because of the inflation. Like now I went to buy bread. I paid 70 bob for a bread. I wondered, Ati, I, I thought those people conned me. Because <laughs> I, I, the normal bread. So yeah. I wondered, hey. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine there is that. And now mm -hmm. you are not secure in your workplace. Mm -hmm. So even if you, if, uh, maybe uh, Pastor Choki can tell us, you'll find even yeah. if someone has stress from home, mm -hmm. if they are not comfortable at workplace, that takes a bigger chunk mm -hmm. of the stress. Yes. It takes a bigger chunk because they're just thinking mm -hmm. how they can lose their job. They don't know what to mm -hmm. do. So mm. for me, those are the experiences I have had. Thank you very much. Hey, Martha, you have nailed some very practical examples of really what happened. Mm. Yeni, I'm sure any of our listeners who is employed, who has just listened to you, if they are writing down what you've just said and what Zippy said and what uh, what mm. Choki said, if you're listening to us, I am sure you must be with a pen and paper writing down some of these things because they probably hit and roll now that what his mother has said, what Zippy has said, what uh, Mr. Chokiki has said is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> but I can see it in here. <laughs> <laughs> Boniface Musebi is saying, I like the discussion. Thank yeah. you, Boniface, for that. Yeah. Because that is the truth, really. You go to the workplace, mm -hmm. if you are in any formal employment, the things that we have just said, you know, lack of support, systemic institutional mm -hmm. challenges, you know, why, you know, you know, fellow employees, you know, Martha, you've talked mm -hmm. about job insecurity, change management, in, you know, discrimination and boredom, you know, and these are things that mm -hmm. happen. And to you, our listeners and our viewers, we would welcome your comments, send in your comments, send in your questions if you do have. Let us discuss this matter further. There could be things out there that to hear as we are discussing. We are not even aware that you really go through or a solution. You could be having out there something that has been done and has been uh, proven to, to work to deal with this. Now, let me push this a bit further. Let me push the envelope further to ask then, Zippy, from your uh, consultant, HR consultancy experience, how does stress affect performance? How do you think that works from your perspective? Uh, thank you, thank you, Anthony. Um, you know, when you're um, when you're not okay, because when you're when you're stressed, you're not okay mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You're not thinking straight. There are a lot of things mm -hmm. occupying your mind. Um, it will definitely affect the way you work. It will affect what you do on a daily basis. Uh, and mm -hmm. if this goes, goes on cumulatively, it will affect your performance. Sometimes mm -hmm. when we are looking at people who are not performing, it's important for us to look at uh, why are they not performing? Because this person, when we're engaging them initially, they are the qualifications, mm -hmm. probably they have the experience, they came in, they were top on, uh, you know, they were the top stars. Then all of a sudden, this employee is not performing. It's important for us to understand what's going on because something is going on uh, not right somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. And we need to understand so that we can be able to help them. And when we are looking at uh, how it affects performance, you will start realizing um, people who are stressed, number one, will start having issues of absenteeism. They are not coming to work as they should be. They are regularly getting mm -hmm. sick, and sometimes they are not even necessarily mm -hmm. sick going to the doctor. But you know, there's a lot of reasons for them not to come to work because probably the environment is so stressful. They wake up in the morning and they're thinking, I don't really want to go to that office. Maybe they're thinking mm -hmm. about their boss and they're thinking, I cannot face this boss mm -hmm. today. I don't even have the energy mm -hmm. to face them today. So you start realizing mm -hmm. there are spikes in terms of absenteeism. And I'm sure mother will tell you when you're doing the metrics and you're doing reporting and you start looking at the trends of, you know, the number of employees who have been absent because they are sick or for whatever other reasons, then you actually start to see a trend and it starts making you want to know what are the reasons for this? Because some of the reasons could be stress. You start yeah. realizing um, there's poor time management and an employee will come to work. Maybe there's a project they're working on and this project had a deadline, which was a very reasonable deadline. 
but they are not meeting the deadline all of a sudden. And we keep on mm. shifting goalposts. And when you go back and start take, uh, uh, you know, tracing back, you start realizing probably there's a challenge in terms of how they manage their time. They'll probably come to work, they're doing a lot of things, but they're not achieving much. Why? Because they're preoccupied with a lot of other things in their minds because of the different uh, stress triggers. The other thing you will realize is um, it also has a challenge with the health. I've mentioned when I was looking at uh, research, you know, a lot of people have died just from uh, stress-related uh, ailments, you know. So it can cause ailments. Uh, we started seeing a lot of um, lifestyle diseases. Some of them I want to believe stress is also part of it. I don't know that stress is a lifestyle disease, but stress, again, causes some of these challenges. Um, when I was talking about, um, you know, the triggers, I talked about uh, toxic work environment. And you will start realizing when uh, in employees are stressed, there will be strained relationships. You will start realizing working together becomes almost impossible. There's no teamwork. There's no cohesion. And at the end of the day, all these things will affect the bottom line. If you had a KPI that you needed to achieve, it's going to be very uh, difficult or almost impossible to achieve mm. that KPI because there are all these other distractors that are taking you away from focusing on the goal that you want to achieve. So I would say, yes, uh, stress does affect performance. And if it's not looked into, assuming you are the probably the one leading the organization, because also business owners go through stress. If you're yes. not managing the stress, actually the business can go down because everyone is looking mm -hmm. up to you and you're supposed to manage you know, all these challenges. And if you don't deal with it, if you don't have somewhere to ventilate and i'm glad we have mother here because uh, that's what they deal with um pastor Choki, he's able to help organizations mm -hmm. deal with some of these things uh they will affect the business at the end of the day so it's important for us mm -hmm. to understand how does it affect um performance and what are the signs what are the triggers we need to look into so that we don't allow it to go on unchecked or unrectified uh, okay all right. Thank you. Thank you, Zippy. You've given some is a number of hints from a corporate perspective regarding how stress affects us. Uh, Mr. Choki, uh, from your perspective mm -hmm. as a relationship coach, yes. what do you see mm -hmm. coming out when you deal with people who are going through uh, stress in the workplace? How is it? How do they come out in terms of the way they are able to deliver? What's your perspective on this? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anthony. And uh, I remember, you know, talking about that, I just remember one of my clients I dealt with several years ago. I uh, was a top manager with uh, one of the leading uh, telcos in the country. And uh, come to find out, you know, you know, we are talking about stress at the workplace. It's very, very interesting that the stress at the workplace affects us at home. And stress at home affects us, affects our performance at the workplace. And so this guy was had been put on PIPs, the performance indicator. Uh, 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 what what do you call it? The, uh, the PIP, the performance indicator yeah. something Improvement. program. Yes, yes, program. Yeah, he's been put in a PIP. And so uh, come to find out, he was stressed because of things not working at home, but and because of uh, being put uh, on this program at the workplace. He was carrying stress back home, which was now uh, causing him more stress that again now was affecting his performance. I don't know if you're seeing that. One yeah. is feeding it to the other. The stress yeah. at the workplace is causing stress at home, and the stress at home, at home is causing more stress at the workplace, and so his performance was, uh, uh, was being affected. And so until we had to take him through uh, uh, just some therapy and, and coaching in his relationship, and when things were working at home, Things began to work at the workplace, and uh, yeah, and I, I think after some time uh, we met two years later, and he even told me I'd been promoted after that. So it, you can see how it critically affects somebody's uh, uh, performance. Uh, I think my, uh, my mother talked about boredom. You see, when you get to a level where you're not able to produce more, or, or you're demotivated in, in terms of your work, then that also yeah. can definitely does affect your performance. Uh, maybe coming back to something Martha shared earlier about uh, organizational change, change management. You see, again, mm -hmm. as a, uh, one of the things I do also is a, I'm a behavior analyst, and so we do personality profiling and all that. And one of the things is when you're looking at people, people are very different. There are those, uh, we call them early catchers, people who will change when you, 
when change comes they quickly adapt adopt and move on and that's a very mm -hmm. small percentage about 20 percent then there's another uh, uh, maybe another 20 percent who are uh, whatever happens it will take them years to change and then now there's a bulk of us who now need time to, to properly transit but again working mm -hmm. with personalities you see if you are people like uh, my personality who are very stable a uh, change mm -hmm. causes stress and, and that then will affect our performance uh, simply because uh, it, it, it's causing a destabilizing effect in my life. Mm. And so, yes, yeah. uh, 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 these things do affect our performance. Uh, uh, Zippy talked about, uh, you know, one of the things that we do with many times underrate is our mental and emotional energy. It's very easy mm. to know, you know about your physical energies going down, but what, what about your uh, mental and uh, emotional energy? And when you're stressed, you you are emotionally uh, the, the energy that you 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 have to you know carry through uh, is is so yeah. much, and that then affects your performance mentally. You're not able to think through uh, properly, and so it's also definitely will affect uh, your uh, performance. I think going back to something something that uh, Zip again said, uh, uh, and and I think HR needs to help uh, many organizations is to help them realize that. These people are not just, uh, you know, we say this, we say that we are first human beings, then human doings. So it's, mm. it's, it's being able to connect with my being. I like, so I like what Zippy said, yeah, when there's a performance issue, it's not to quickly uh, uh, put somebody on a PIP or want to see how you can get rid of them, but to try to find out what is happening. Let's be humane enough to, to mm. begin to, uh, you know, find out probably has been dumped by his girlfriend or, 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 mm. or the man took off and left her. And so those things mm. are affecting the performance at the workplace. They can't concentrate, they can't focus because of these other things that they have to deal with. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, somebody put on PIP and then he's sorted out mentally and then he's promoted. That is what we call a story with a, a story with, with a, you know, with a you know, happily ever after, if you could call it that way. Mm. <laughs> Master, let's see from yesterday, huh? from your work in the corporate world at a senior HR level. What's your, how do you see performance being affected by stress? And I'm sure you have a lot of anecdotes on the same. Yes, Tony, and I really agree with my two colleagues right here. And you know, you know that um, the drivers of, of, or the highest driver of results in an organization is the members of staff. And so if, mm. if organizations can, can have that at the top and have it right, mm. they will not have issues with, with um, performance or they will not have issues with productivity. Mm. Now, when an employee is, has a mental issue, you, by the way, you will know, like even if for me, if I speak for me, I even know when I'm stressed because I have errors in my work. Mm. So I would look something that I sent to my boss. When I look at it later, I say, gosh, I sent this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so you find errors in, so mm. there's a lot of back and forth. Mm. Um, there's also, uh, you find now, there, if, if you have met set objectives, if someone is not in the right mental health, they will not meet those objectives. So the organization is affected because then the objectives are not being met. And then now it brings in the, the issue of mental issues um, and uh, conflicts because we are not understanding. <laughs> you know, you could be going through something and no one is understanding and 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 especially for those who don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things not done, things are not moving, things mm -hmm. need to be done and they are not done. By the time we are realizing is when there's an outcry. Yes. Like if, if you are supporting people, you hear them complaining, hey, as we don't get support. So you wonder, ah, I thought that person was, is a good worker. Mm -hmm. Then you, found, you find they switched off at some point. And they mm. don't care anymore. And they don't even know that they don't care. Yes. So there's no productivity going on. And then, then 
you can't even decide to put that person in PIP because you need, like Pastor has said, you need to find out because this person under normal circumstances, they are fine. Yes. What is going on? So you'll find that it's just productivity that, that mess is messed by stress. It's really yes. affected. And also they are kind it can bring like burnout. Uh, yes. you, you just feel burned out. You read somewhere, you don't even care anymore. You wake up yeah. in the morning, you just don't want to wake up. And, and then also it can also bring conflicts mm. because the people you are working with are not understanding what you're going through. So now yeah. the issue of conflict mm. comes in. So at the end of the day, the, the environment is yes. affected. And if the environment is affected, mm. definitely performance will be affected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. You, you've, you've raised a number of you and uh, Mr. Choki have raised a number of points how this is affected both from a personal perspective you know uh you know the issues regarding conflict in fact if there's one thing that i normally can detect very quickly in any workplace if a colleague we are working with and then tomorrow i notice these guys not talking okay is answering you roughly then you realize what to do i think you have issues Let's 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 leave. and then after a few days, come to tell you, hey, I had issues, man. I had issues with you know my spouse, I had issues with my this and that. And then you realize, okay, that was like a temporary uh, stress issue that was affecting the way we are relating. But then again, it can come; it becomes a bit more uh, a bit more prolonged. Where now we are seeing, hey, dude, you are not with us, uh, madam, you are not with us. It could be even the management. We're noticing the boss who used to be very jolly, very interactive, is suddenly cold, is distracted, he or she is, you know, their minds are not there. I used to see this a lot when I was employed in one uh, one of these banking institutions. You notice uh, the branch manager one time he's good, the next time uh, he they or she look distracted, look distant. You, know, go, you hear they have uh, handed in their resignation, things moving. Here and there, there is confusion. So stress indeed has a big uh, effect on on, 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 on 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 performance. And I like the way Mr. Choki has put it: issues regarding uh, uh, I've forgotten the thought. Issues regarding uh, <laughs> actually, I've forgotten what I was about to say. But anyway, stress does affect our performance, and sometimes. Yes, I remember what I was about to say. Issues regarding uh, change management. Uh, you find some people react very quickly to change. Ah, things are changing. Okay, let's shift. Let's shift. Uh, life was a bit boring. Let's shift gears. Others are wondering, wow, our world is coming upside down. How do we handle it? How do we handle it? And then there's the majority that, you, like Martha said, they need to be shepherded slowly. They eat, they chew the change bit by bit. Yeah, we chew the change bit by bit. And then now we are satisfied with the new status quo. Now my desk is no longer at the corner. I have to relate with other human beings. You know, some of them, you, know, you are used to sitting yourself in an office corner. Now you're living with other human yeah. beings. Yeah, they are, yeah, they are seeing you the way you to your mandazi in the office. Yeah. Change, yeah. change can be can affect, you know, yeah. uh, your performance. Yes, yes. change mm -hmm. indeed does affect performance. I can imagine, uh, Martha, you, you have been in several restructurings, especially in the NGO world. And, <laughs> and, and you've seen the way, uh, as a HR, I'm sure you undergo stress when you're giving somebody a letter to tell them, uh, unfortunately, you are your contract is not being renewed not because you did a poor job but simply because mm. uh, funding has dried up and now mm. uh, i'm sorry uh, we will give you a certificate of service you know all those nice things that hr people say but that is the door and you know what you're saying, that is the door that you need to face i can imagine even for you as hr officers hr managers you do undergo stress giving somebody a yes. letter to tell him mm. Uh, the, that is the door that you need to use to go out. Now, as I before I bring in the third point, I want to appreciate Mr. Augustus Kiyoko, the lever. Uh, he has made a very good point. 
uh, he's saying in a lot of organizations the uh, the missing link uh, the missing link is how to provide emotional support to deal with high levels of stress within the workplace that is very true mr kyoko that is very true that that aspect there in fact it actually brings to the third point that i wanted to bring and i wanted to bring to zippy how do we manage this i know zippy you probably this one i should ask me uh, Mr. Choki, uh, how to mm. deal with this? I actually, uh, Pastor Choki, let me ask you this instead of asking Zippy. Okay. From, yes. uh, from your uh, perspective as a relationship coach, how do you mm. manage this? I know there are myriad of uh, ways, solutions that we can be given, but just give us from your own perspective, how do you manage this uh, stress that comes in the workplace? Thank you. Thank you, to, uh, Anthony. Uh, the first thing is to admit and accept that I am stressed. So often, many people don't even know they are stressed, especially mm -hmm. guys. A guy will, he will deny. We are in denial and we are, we are still pushing and we are pushing and yet everything indicates that we are stressed. And there, so there are some stress indicators that we help people, you know, just some exercises that they, they can do. We give them some tools so they discover and they realize that actually they are stressed. So you need to determine first that uh, the current, your current stressors they are within your life. What 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 is causing that stress? What is causing you mm -hmm. that emotional drain of energy? And then then you go to identifying ways to reduce that stress. How are you going to reduce the stress? And what changes do you need to make? And so as a coach, now I come alongside you in helping you to make those changes. Is a is a is a is an action plan in how you're going to manage uh, the change. But if you are stressed, mm -hmm. I think three three questions are very very important. Number one is to ask what can you do to distress. What can you do to distress? Mm -hmm. But secondly, is who can support you in, in, in that? Uh, who, who, do you, who can you get support from? And sometimes I think the lever has talked about something very, very good. In the organization, sometimes you may not have uh, those people who can help you in managing that stress. That's why you can seek, uh, you can outsource uh, people like us and others uh, go for counseling so that there's somebody who can help you distress. But then thirdly is how can you increase your emotional inputs? Look for things that uh, uh, energize you. You know, stress is about being de-energized. So what can energize okay. you? Even within the workspace, how can you get the energized? And I, I think also working with the HR, sometimes uh, people are stressed because their skills, their passions, maybe don't match what they're doing, but how can we probably take them to a different department or see what else they can do or add something else into their, into their, into their uh, d job description that can bring certain energy. Sometimes, I think uh, Martha talked about it earlier, they are bored, so they need a new challenge. Uh, uh, and then some practical things is just like eating well, uh, you know, make sure that you're eating right. Make sure you have enough sleep. Yes. Sleep is key. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a strong advocate of sleep. My favorite scripture is uh, he gives his beloved sleep. Uh, so <laughs> you need, you, you need at least uh, six to eight hours of adequate sleep. If you're not sleeping well, you know, when you sleep, the body shuts down and by the time you're waking up in the morning, it begins to release the feel-good hormones that energize you for the day. And so you go in the morning and you start working. But if you're not, if you didn't have enough sleep, the morning can be dragging. You, your output, productivity, as you're saying mm -hmm. earlier, is affected. Uh, and now, as I like that many organizations now, uh, maybe part of answering Deleva's question is that there are many organizations, organizations now are including having gyms at the workplace. So even physical mm -hmm. exercise helps. Because as you do physical exercise, your body also releases the feel-good hormones that are help mm. in overcoming the stress hormones and so helps you to distress in, in a good way. So those are some of the basic things you can do. Oh, oh uh, uh, support, uh, social, uh, be, uh, talk, you know, just have people that you can talk to. You know, it's very, mm. very interesting, uh, 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 Anthony, and, and, and it's very, very uh, clear. You can see here we have two HR uh, specialists who are women. Uh, HR mm. and counseling is full of women. Those are the professions that we need to do. Uh, we need to have an affirmative action <laughs> so that men can be brought in as well. And so often, uh, I find many people when they come and see I'm a man uh, as a counselor or a coach, they are even coaching, but they were even in coaches. Majority of the coach coaches are ladies and men. And men want to talk to men. 
Men will not, especially when they are stressed, they don't want to be talking to a woman. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> when they start talking to a woman, they can end up in the wrong relationships <laughs> now. Yeah. So men, we need men, <laughs> we need to bring in men to be able to help men. Because I'm telling mm -hmm. you, uh, and Zippy, maybe you can do that research, most people who are stressed are, are men. Women talk. You know, a woman will talk. Women, if there's issues at home, they will go to the office. They'll start talking. Uh, uh, they'll even talk to their bosses, tell their bosses about their husbands. Us men will be there dying with our issues. We are not talking. Mm. We are just there. And and sometimes, by the way, it, it, and this can, can look like we are performing because we'll even be staying, overstaying at our places of work. And one of the things mm. that I, I tell bosses, you need to see is that, what is this guy is doing? Past seven, why is he still in the office? Tell him to go home. <laughs> Man, <laughs> one of the reasons he doesn't want to go home is because maybe there are issues at home. And that, those are some of the mm. things you can be able to tell. Those could be indicators uh, uh, allowing you to see, oh, this guy is going through something. But I think we need to, yes, we need to be able to eat well. We need to be able to exercise. We need to social support is very, very important. We need to just have spaces where people can talk. I think one of the good things that has happened is team building activities are also very, very good. When staff go out for a weekend, just do those team building. It's a good distressor. It's also a good time to just socialize and also just, uh, uh, and be at ease and release all the pressures. Look for hobbies. People have forgotten their hobbies. You know, when you talk about mm. recreation, that one, eh? recreate. Mm. Recreation is about recreating. Mm. So how do you recreate yourself? Mm. I do that by watching movies myself. I watch movies to recreate. And once I watch a movie, sometimes mm. even I'm bored. I, I, yesterday morning, I couldn't, I couldn't get myself working. So I had to go and watch a good movie. And after that, I was able to work for another five hours. <laughs> so how can you recreate? <laughs> Mm. How can you recreate? What things bring energy? We call them the green, the green things in your life. What do they bring energy to you? Wow. Because so often uh, you can be so caught up with the red stuff. The red stuff are the things that de-energize you. So you need some. Uh, what, what are your hobbies? You know, I ask, we ask people that. And sometimes in coaching, I ask, "What are your hobbies?" People have forgotten. Matter has forgotten what are hobbies. You know, sometimes it could be <laughs> playing kati, whatever it is. <laughs> Look for something that will de-energize you. <laughs> Uh, and yeah. that's a <laughs> yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Yes, uh, Pastor Choki, you have really given us. To those of us who are listening, if you are wondering, Mr. Augustus Kiyoko Deleva, if you are wondering, where is the link? We have already gotten a few links here and there. Mm -hmm. What organizations can be able to do to be able to bring emotional support to their staff? Martha, let me come to you before I go to Zippy. What's your what's your take on how to manage stress? I know you guys at LVCT Health have talked about mental. You're helping companies deal with mental uh, employees of companies deal with mental stress and all that. But from your perspective, how do we manage? How do we manage uh, uh, stress and, and 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 mitigate it uh, from a HR perspective? Okay, so. I like pastor's input. I'll just uh, kind of add a few and I'll start. I can say I look at it from two angles. I look at it from the organization angle, how how they can help this. Mm -hmm. And um, like, our, like I talked about mental wellness in the workplace and maybe having, having counselors and making sure staff are aware that if you're feeling like this, there's this, there's this service, and this is the number you can call. We will not yeah. be told what you discussed. We'll just be sent the bill. So mm. organizations can do that. The other thing we can do in organizations is, especially for work, ensure that we have clear job descriptions mm. and ensure that employees are clear with what they are, they are doing. Yes. So that, um, you know, it's not haphazard. Someone is not coming to work, going home late, and they cannot even tell mm. what they did. So mm. when, when comes, push comes to, come, when it comes to push, they can't even account of their time and they're feeling wasted. The yes. other thing an organization can do is uh, have those team buildings, like Pastor has said. You mm. Try look for money to get the staff to go out. And, mm. and 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 it can include having meetings outside 
So not every time there's a meeting, it's in the office. Changing environment kind of, you know, like have you ever had a meeting in Mombasa? You just, you're in a meeting the, the whole day, but you feel you're like you're on leave. So mm. having those actually, and organizations not feeling like it's an expense, it's, it's a good thing um, that they can do. And and also having clear policies, yes. On and, and on, especially on reporting lines and how we do things here. We mm. staff, the managers and staff relationships needs to be addressed, so that work is addressed well. So that managers stop. There shouldn't be managers who are harassing their staff. So so that someone feels like they belong in an organization. They don't just yeah. feel that, hey, my job can push out tomorrow. So mm -hmm. those are some of the things. Organization culture really needs to accommodate the staffing matters. So let's mm -hmm. look at it briefly on a, from an individual point of view. How can I manage stress? Like I said, mm -hmm. I got to learn that higher. I Now I'm able to identify when I'm stressed because mm -hmm. of my work output. Mm -hmm. So what do I do in that time? For me, um, as an individual, I actually now start tracking. Like I put a tracker mm -hmm. on what is changing, what is causing this stress. So I'm mm -hmm. able to analyze it. So like Pastor said, you must accept. So initially, I have accepted yes. For me to do this, this, this then I look at what has been happening lately. Maybe I have had issues with my boss or I'm on my staff. I'm on my own personal life. And I just start mm -hmm. tracking what is stressing me. Then if it has something to do with the people I work with or people who I relate with, it's good to, for me, I'm, I'm open. I like, we talk, we establish boundaries mm. in, the, in the relationship we are in. If it's work and a relationship, we purely came here to work. <laughs> mm. So can we please stick to the, mm. to the rules? Yeah. And yes. if it is personal relationships, uh, we we still have to establish boundaries so that we stop yes. making each other stressed. Um, yes. The other thing, and Pastor said, is get support. And that's why we have mental, mental health uh, supporters, like our organization. Call me. Yes. I'll... I'll, sub, I'll get you someone who you can talk to. You can talk to Pastor Choki. He's here. He can guide you. And, and maybe you are about to be sacked. Then you find things have turned around. Now you are you have you are being promoted. You know. Yes. Or yes. If if it's uh those recreational, when Pastor was talking, Tony, I remember those days we used to go and play Kati at Aboretum. Mm. Mm. <laughs> One of our team, the directors of very strong organizations. Yes. And that is really good. And, and for, mm -hmm. for me, like just the other day with my girls, we, we went to uh, to rivers <laughs> and did those things that uh, those kids, you know, those things it's that tough. parents take to kids for yes. kids. Yeah. We did them mm -hmm. ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know such kind of stuff i i also like watching movies i like documentaries i can mm. wake up and decide today i'm doing you know stop the rat race yeah mm. Mm. like you have mm. to, even when you if you need to go and live go and live come on no matter who yes. is who is against it you mm. know very well if i don't take one or two days i'm going to burn out mm. just go and leave and when you go and leave it's okay mm. to switch off the phone mm. and just mm. be so me mm. i have done that i've gone on leave switched off the phone not removed my pajamas the people who will be around me they know that i'm uh, i'm on leave yes. mm. <laughs> So you just wake up between you, sitting room, bed, is is just kitchen, bed, and sitting room, and movies, and anything that is not work. 
anything yeah. that is not like a wider that you do okay. even if you do that for a day just one day you'll see the difference it can impact or take like for us girls and and let me tell you the people who are very good at helping you with stress are mm. your like for me are my girls mm. because we will go and talk girl stuff and we laugh mm. at nothing <laughs> yes. or we do those silly things please you can never mm. get old to take mm. care of yourself mm. you, you mm. can't have that that adult face Hmm? Mm, that you yes. can't mm. you can't be seen doing some things that is upon mm. you by the way i can only mm. tell you like when we did the two rivers thing it was like a deliverance you know mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you feel so free you know yes. like you can mm. start life again that so is, yeah. so those are just a few practical things that people can do thank you Wow, 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 wow. Those are very good pointers that we have had. Well, we appreciate, uh, you know, these discussions that we are having. That indeed, you can be able to both self-manage to handle stress by things like, first of all, understanding do you, when, when do stress triggers come in? Uh, uh, what is it that triggers the stress? Is it the workplace? Is it at home? Is it whatever it is? And when it happens, how do you self uh, medicate, if you could call it that way, things to do with nutrition, things to do with exercise, recreation. You know, Pastor Choki has told us recreation is recreating something that was there before, you know. And then now, from a professional perspective, and I will bring this, even as we come to a close, to let our viewers and listeners know, uh, we've heard from uh, Mr. Choki and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and Martha about the, the respective organizations, what they do to help their uh, either their workers or what they help out there, the help that you can get out there as an organization and as individuals. If you need help, what can you do in addition to you know uh, you know uh, self self management? Can you be able to get professional help to be able to deal with stress, both for you, for your organization, and for you as an individual? And I really appreciate the comments that have come in, Mr. Douglas Nyamori. Thank you for your call comment that indeed you love the conversation and that burnout is real and not sometimes not easily detected in its early stages that is very very true mr nyamori many times uh, for professionals uh, i'm sure zippy as you as you uh, conclude this uh, i'm sure you can relate to the fact that burnout happens and we are not aware that we are burning out as we're operating and mm. now we are in the red zone and uh, we we think we are very productive, you know, we are staying at seven at night in the office, we are meeting those targets. But dude, you are burning out. And as, as Pastor Joki says, it is mostly us men who, uh, you know, we are engaged, we are working hard. But somebody looking at you is thinking, dude, you are stressed and you are you are drags, you have kunya petroli, sasa gari nena na fumes, you know. So Zippy, can you tell us? Uh, Briefly, as we come to a close, our time is really gone. Um, how do you uh, handle this aspect from your perspective? Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. And I think uh, Martha and uh, Pastor Barnabas have handled this very well. Um, but just go, to, go back to the question uh, Mr. Augustus asked about, uh, you know, the missing link. I think it's very important for employers to provide an avenue for employees to ventilate. And Miss uh, Pastor mentioned about uh, men and uh, women counselors and not being able to get the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to share some of the challenges probably they are going through. I think we need to start considering not just having mostly women counselors, but also how do we bring in support for the male employees because they also go through a lot of stress. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. a lot of times they don't talk about it. Uh, we only get to realize when things uh, are too far gone and we start wondering, this person was okay, yet yeah, they were never okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I must say for employers, we need to create a conducive work environment. And how do we do this? Mother has touched a bit on, on this. How do we create um, the space where employees understand expectations? The employees understand what, uh, where the employer is going, understand the mission, the vision of the organization. 
Unfortunately for SME, sometimes we employ people, but we don't give them clear direction. And that actually mm -hmm. starts becoming the basics of uh, creating a stressful work environment. So we need to be able to give very clear guidelines, very clear guidance. Where are we taking this business? So people can understand and they can know how am I fitting in? How am I going to be measured in terms of my, my, my performance? Um, supporting employees is something else. But again, you can't support employees if you don't understand the challenges they are going through. So when we are creating systems, when we are creating checks and balances, let's create uh, programs where we are able to understand what em the employee is going through, not just at work, but they can be able to open up and talk about some, some of the challenges they might be going through uh, from outside there. They will probably not talk to you directly as a, as a boss, but can we create opportunities for them to be able to go and ventilate? And the other thing I will talk about, which Mother again has touched on, let's create wellness programs. And some of them don't have to be expensive. You know, I remember, I can't remember which was they mentioned, they have uh, what they call a happy hour in the office. Like on a Friday, you know, there's just a free hour where, you know, there's laughter, you know, they're doing things that is not just the norm, what they, they're so busy doing from morning to evening. And it also allows people to let that stress out. Um, for individuals, understand what it is that you can do to just minimize on the stress and what triggers out your stress. And I like what Mother has said, about tracking because when you start getting stressed you actually um can quite a kind of tell i'm stressed but do you know what is stressing you can you be able to trace back and see what has changed that is creating this pressure in your life and how can you deal with it mm. mr douglas has talked about barnabas again this i'm directing to ceos because i work a lot with ceos and i've seen a lot of challenges where they feel i can't go away or leave if i go or leave things will just go completely wrong. Uh, and that actually means you don't have systems in your organization. You don't have structures in your organization. And that's why you can't go away. You can't trust the people you have employed to support you. So again, if you're going to get to a place where you're getting burnout, start asking yourself the hard questions. Why am I getting burnout? Is it because I am overworked? Uh, why am I overworked? Is it work that I can delegate? Um, am I going on leave? And when I go on leave, like mother is saying, Am I, going, am I really going on leave and switching off that phone and actually just taking time to rest? Because if you don't rest, you will get burned out. And I will say like, um, you know, my mom keeps on telling me, if you don't take care of your body that is looking for that money, then you will never get to enjoy that money. You might end up enjoying that, uh, not enjoying that money, but spending it in hospitalization. You might even lose yourself in the process. So let's take care of ourselves because I think that is very critical in terms of having to come back to work and managing our performance. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, Zippy. Those, those are very good points that you have brought in. And even as we have come to the end of our, of our podcast today, we want to appreciate the fact that stress is manageable. Stress is not supposed to be a killer. And uh, you know, I read somewhere the other day that actually there is an amount of good stress that is required to keep your brain mm -hmm. on you know on a positive you know on a positive level good stress uh, good stress is basically what keeps your mind active you know you have a puzzle or a problem that you need to solve there is a level where the brain apparently has you know, a level of good stress that is important for you to keep functioning but today we are talking about the bad stress the bad stress that makes you look bad, you know, you, you, you can't cope, you can't function, you find yourself going into joints to go and consume and imbibe things to cope. And that mm -hmm. is what we have discussed today. So we have come to the end of our podcast. Today was very interactive. It was very good. We appreciate all those that have logged in to talk, uh, you know, those who are listening in. And even to our panelists today, we have the constructive. This is a very wide subject. We cannot you know, deconstruct it nicely within just an hour or so. So if you'd like to know more about those who discussed today, we here at Aurum Consultants, if you want to know more about us and how we can help you uh, with people management and build winning teams, you can get in touch with us via the contacts at the bottom of the screen, you know, you know by WhatsApp, you know, uh, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And you can also visit our website. In addition, if you'd like to get in touch with Pastor Achoki, you'd like to know more. Uh, this gentleman today spoke a lot of very deep things. I want to know more about how can I deal 
we stress uh, how how can I be able to handle issues to do with the relationship. Uh, Pastor, I had mentioned that I had hoped that yes. you'd be able to get a chance to tell people what you do. Kindly, uh, let, uh, let our viewers Thank and you. listeners know what uh, Mr. Choki does. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a, a life coach spe uh, uh, specifically uh, focused on relationships, helping people on matters relationship. It could be at the workplace. It could be at a personal level. Uh, uh, helping you prepare uh, for marriage, helping people who are married. We, so I also uh, work as a marriage and a relationship coach. We help people through coaching, helping them to improve and work on their relational goals. We also help you uh, develop uh, certain skills that are necessary to have a good and a healthy relationship. Uh, 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 upscale and develop your relational competencies. Uh, through certain things that we do, but at the same time, also I am a, a behavior and motivator uh, analyst with the TTI Institute in South Africa. We are the agency in in Kenya, so we help uh, even do uh, 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 scientifically help you identify your stress levels, and help you identify uh, your personality. Uh, we also do personality tests. And so that helps you to see what, how best you can work in different areas. And so uh, that's basically what we do. At the same time, I'm also an author uh, recently. Uh, I've, I've, I've added the title of an author <laughs> to the things that we do, written a book, uh, Marriage, Thistles, and Flowers. Yes, so basically that's what we do. Awesome, awesome. And your company is the Two Ship Solution? Two Ship Solutions, sorry. Yeah, our company is called Two Ships. We believe that we are the other ship that comes alongside your ship. That ship can be that organization. That ship can be that other person. Uh, that can be your relationship. Uh, so we help you in the turbulent waters of relationships. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you very much, Mr. Choki. As you've heard, uh, that is uh, his organization, Two Ship Solution, that helps people uh, in all matters relating to relationships and, uh, and coaching. Uh, Madam Martha, if you'd like to know more about what she does at uh, LVCT Health, you can also get in touch with us uh, through here at Aurum Consultants. We would love to help you deal with issues regarding uh, mental health and, uh, and specifically, as she said at the beginning of the program, uh, to her colleagues in the, uh, in the corporate space, especially the NGOs, things regarding safeguarding. You can always get in touch with us on the same. Now we have come to the end of our podcast today. We are so glad that you could be able to join us. We're so glad that you could be able to contribute for those who did contribute. And now that you've come to the end of the month, we are looking forward to a new month with a new topic. But until then, thank you for coming in. If you'd, uh, if you'd like a topic, there's a topic that you'd want to think you've been watching our podcast for a while and you're thinking, hey, you guys have never discussed X or Y or this or that. Kindly send us via LinkedIn, via uh, YouTube, via Facebook. Tell us you'd like to hear this particular topic being discussed by HR consultants. And we would love to do that. We would love to, uh, to, to deconstruct these kind of things uh, that affect people in the workplace. Because at the end of the day, what you want to do is to be part of a winning team or to build a winning team as a business person. With that said, thank you for taking time to join us. Uh, this Saturday, we pray that you have a good weekend till we meet next week, same time, same place. God bless you. Thank you.